Lots of people have got fences and walls. It's pretty much a part of living in suburbia. But lots of people have got ugly, unattractive ones because you just don't know what to do with them. Joe, the homeowner here, has exactly that problem. So let's see if we can help her and have a bit of fun. Hello. Hi, Hi Joe. Come on, Dan. Wow, you do have the blank canvas. <laughs> yeah, a little boring. What are you looking for? What do you want me to do? Something a little bit more modern and exciting. When we have barbecues and stuff, we're sort of surrounded by brick. I'd love some brick. inspiration. It and... looks like a brick yard. Well, to modernise it, you'd go for render. You'd sort of cover the walls up and bring in a bit of colour. Yeah, yeah. Now, that costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time. But I can fake it a little bit, give you the look, and I can do it in a day. So you go to work, and I'll get busy giving this place a facelift. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. So to give this brickwork a facelift, I'm going to use textured paint and I'm going for the one with the most texture so I can try and hide all these joints. It's important, but, that you use the right primer. That means it's going to stick to the brickwork and nothing's going to fall off on us. This one's called Dulux Texture Primer and it's designed to go on porous masonry under your texture paint. It seals and helps fix the surface's lumps and bumps. Pick a colour, any colour. And for a lot of people, picking a colour is a little bit like a magic trick. Imagine, you're standing in Bunnings or in the paint shop and you're looking at this underneath the fluorescent light. It looks completely different to out here in full sun. And even completely different when you drop it into the shade. Look at that, the different four colours there. Completely different depending on how much sun you get. I'm happy with those two. They're called Oyster Farm and a little bit of European stain. I really like the grey, but you can have your texture paint tinted to a wide range of colours. This is a tough exterior paint. The colour's resistant to weathering and it'll last for ages. Now, it's a very specific roller that you're using and you really load it up. Now, when you're using textured paint, if you go into something like blue board and you only want to get a tiny bit of texture, you can use a finer one. It's a bit easier to work with. We're going on the brickwork here, so I'm using the heaviest one, so I get full coverage in two coats. If you always roll up when the roller's full, you end up with a lot less product flicking onto the ground. Really, the only difference between this and painting is when you put the paint on, it's not finished. You need to go and trowel over it. So you can't apply it, go off, have a cup of coffee, check the footy scores, and do all that and come back and do this. While it's still tacky, you need to <laughs> trowel it up and start filling in all those joints in the brickwork. Don't worry about things like that. The second coat will pick it up. Now, remember there was three citrus along this wall and they're not that healthy and they're not that happy. And they look very sparse here. But if we clump them together as three, they're going to shade each other and they're actually going to look more full body because they're together. Thanks, boys. And another tip. Take these tags off. They're just going to damage the trunk that they're on. The tree might outgrow them and you'll end up stifling its growth. If you need to know what it is, just bury it in some of the soil. I can see a huge difference, but I'm not going to be looking at it every day. So let's go and grab Jo and see what she thinks. So what do you think? Fantastic. Love it. It's wonderful. It does Thank look you. like a new courtyard, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Bricks, yeah. hot and bland would be the words to describe mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. And now I'd say modern, yeah. contemporary and desirable. It's more spacious, which I wasn't expecting at all. And a great place for a barbie. <laughs>